have enough road to get up to 88. Roads? Well, we're going, we don't need roads. Hello, everybody, wherever you may be. My name's Larry. My call sign's Kilo 7 Hotel November. Welcome back to Ham Radio Live. Please hit the subscribe button. We don't additives. No additives here. None whatsoever. We just ask you to subscribe to the channel because, hey, we don't put in any sort of commercials here. It makes it fun for everybody. Helps people find the channel actually on YouTube so they can learn about ham radio and join our hobby. Hello, everybody, wherever you may be. This is a redo part two. I, you know, I looked at the video for a second. I'm going, this stinks. <laughs> it was because of the video. I'll show you why. Here's, here's what you should have seen both receivers working together. Yeah, it was not very successful. So immediately I said, absolutely not. I'm going back and I'm going to redo this video. Let's go. <laughs> immediately. So we're going to show this on Diverse to Receive the real way. And because it's important to do it right. We want to make sure and thank you for coming back since you're here. Thank you so much. Andy, you're the best. Two Echo, Zero, Romeo, Echo, Echo from Great Britain. That's late. Holy crud, it's late where you are, man. Thanks for coming back. This is great. Mark's here, November 6th. Mike, India, November. Hey, first time I've seen you. Thanks for coming. Good to see you. All right. Let's quickly go in to diversity mode. We're going to show you what the FTDX 101 does with different antennas, okay? How this works and why it's important is if you're working rare DX, or DX is just hard to hear because you've got a lot of QSY, a lot of fade, right? You'll hear the signal barely okay and a lot of times because of the qsy or fade we can't hear the whole thing it's helpful to be able to listen on a second antenna at the same time that's the brilliant part about this transceiver the icom 7610 the elecraft k3 did it yeah they did it as well as the k4 will do it the k4d you have to go to the d to make that work so there you go say hello from sunny canada you know it's warmer in canada than it is in texas no joke welcome back john good to see you let's do this the what we call the right way because the right way is kind of how i like to do things here because we try and teach have radio here and when i saw this i was going oh no 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 oh, oh. There's no way I'm going to put a video up there that looks like that because, hey, look at the same DFO. It's beautiful. No, 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 no. So let's get to the rig. Let's take a look at it in what it should have looked like in the last video so that you guys can see what I'm talking about. This is what the FTDX 101 looks like when it's working on both sides. Okay, so when you're using both VFOs, working side by side. Let's take a look at it, okay? Here is the rig, okay? On the left, you see VFO A, okay? That's the first receiver. The second one's identical, okay? We have it in what's called sync mode. Now, if you get a 101 and you want to do this, let me quickly show you in a way that you can do this fairly easily, okay? On the 101, there is a button that's right here. It's called sync. If you hold it in for a moment, VFO A and B will track exactly the same together. Then all you really need to do is just change the antenna input to each one. Okay. So let me move real quick. I'm going to switch back to VFO A. So now we're on the first receiver. We're just going to spin just a little bit off just for, you know, just for fun. So we can show you that we're on different frequency, okay? Now, if we go to the sync button and we just press it, it won't sync, okay? It might be in sync mode, but what that does is if you're working split, okay? Let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's say, for example, you were working at 14242 and the person was up five, okay? So they'd be at 14247 and let's make it just for argument's sake, 930, okay? So there you are, you're up five, sync, you're done. Now, if you're going to continue to work like this, 
the second VFO is going to track at 5 kilohertz. See? It's 5 kilohertz back each time. So you would be receiving on one 5 kilohertz back and on the other 5 kilohertz up. But say, for example, you wanted to use this transceiver and use something like diversity reception, where basically you can listen to each receiver through a different antenna at the same time. That's the brilliance of what this radio can do, as well as a 7610, like I said, the K3, K4, the Flex. With multiple antenna inputs, you simply have to make the receiver work for you. Now, on this transceiver, the way to make it work isn't just to simply press that sync button. It's to hold it in until it beeps again. Now you're synced. See how both VFOs are exactly the same now? We're not five down or five up, and they move exactly in concert together. So let's take a look. I've shown you how we get it on. Now that's how we get the sync mode on so that we're on the same frequency. And that gives us the chance to use diversity reception. So let's take a look. And now you can see on both receivers what they're doing at the same time. Antenna number two is the Chameleon MPAS 2.0. That's a vertical. It's about 22 feet up. Okay. The second one is antenna three. So on VFOB, the one on the right, that's antenna three LN. Okay. But we're going to start first with the DX Commander all band vertical. Okay. So on VFO one, it's going to be Callum's antenna there. That's the DX Commander all band vertical. On the second VFO, we're going to run the Chameleon MPAS 2.0. It's a fantastic, it really is. It's a fantastic antenna for 20 meters. It's perfect. The size of it's great. It works 20 and 17 brilliantly. It's a great antenna. It really is. And up in five minutes. Simple to do. One counterpoise wire, you just run it and you're up and going. So let's take a look, see how it works. Okay. Here's diversity receive. We're currently right now on VFO A. And you can see we're using antenna one. Move over to two. And you might have thought, well, wait, wait a minute. Where, where was the signal? Okay, remember, it's using antenna one. Okay, antenna one has got a different amount of RF coming into it than the second VFO. So you need to adjust it by raising the level. So as we raise the level of that first VFO, it's going to increase on the waterfall or technically that's what it's supposed to do however <laughs> it's it's not doing it well it's not my day <laughs> you know there are days in life where you just kind of have to look at things and laugh because it's like okay we're here the computer's blinking on and off and there you go wow okay just a second let me clear off the sink real quick give me a moment I'm going to remove it and get off of mono mode, put it back on to, on to dual. You know, I do this for fun. So for me, I'm having a good time. I hope you guys are too. Here we go. Let's take a look at the rig. All right. So let's go over it. We'll just take a look here and we're going to bump up. We're just going to go over and we're going to start here on mono. So that's just on VFOA. Okay. So staying on A, we're just going to bring up the gain just the gain on the front end and there's no oh you know what i know what happened hang on I, I had switched it to use the radio downstairs that's funny i switched it to use the ftd extend okay see simply fixed there you go <laughs> i told you it'd be easy i just couldn't figure out what the heck is going on okay so vfo a is on the left okay and VFO B is on the right. I'm going to pull off the notch and contour on VFO A, okay? And if you take a look at it, what we have is we have the, I'm going to change the display here real quick for you guys, okay? You can either put it like this, where essentially both receivers are on top of each other, sub on top, see? And then it says main on the bottom, or you can move it, side by side like that. I 
like it this way better. I just do. Okay, so on antenna one on the left is Cal McCormick's DX Commander all band vertical. Okay, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to lower down the gain because it's just too hot because, you know, <laughs> I was ready to work radio downstairs later today. So there we go. If I do want to move it over the same thing so it matches on VFOB, all I do is I press the sub receiver and then I just bring it back down. See? goes back down just like it did on A. So now you have essentially the same waterfall showing on both ends. It's just that they have different amounts of noise coming into them because they're on different antennas. So we're just trying to bring up to about the same look in the waterfall. That's why it looks that way. Now let's take a listen. This is VFO B. So this is the second VFO using the chameleon. Sorry about that. Hold on. There we go. Okay. There's A. Here's B. And this is on the this is on the chameleon. Okay, the 2.0 impasse. Both are set to the same width, so the same bandwidth of the frequency that we're seeing. Okay, both are the same. And both are set to generally the same RF amount coming in. Okay. You can tune down a little bit. Got a strong signal here. Okay, here's VFO B. See the difference? There's the gain in Callum's DX Commander antenna right there. And that's even with a preamp on. Go back to A. You got a strong signal right down below. You can kind of see it very, very end of the of the VFO right over here. So they're both synced. Let's listen to them on different antennas. Here's VFO A. Here's B. See the estimator difference too? Let's pull the amp off to make them even. So see, Kellum's antenna is a little hotter. Okay, both RF gains are going to be set to the same level. They're both fully maxed, so... There's no reflection here. And take a look. The, the VFO on the left, which is Callum McCormick's DX Commander All Band Vertical, I think the best antenna by there is in the market. There's nothing that beats it with the quality components as well as the price. It's phenomenal. Now let's listen to what the Brook looks like. Put that on antenna B. Sorry, VFO B. And you won't see much there because, again, it's a receive-only loop. And it's low to the ground, so it's going to have to be brought up with preamps. Let's go over it and take a listen. Let's bring up the gain to it. Let's see, we're bringing up everything to match what we got on the other side. And loops are going to be naturally resistant to noise. It's just because they pick up the magnetic portion of the electromagnetic wave. That's why. Okay? So here it is on the Wellbrook on antenna. This is on receiver B. So VFO B. If we move over to A. One Callum McCormick's 
SDX Commander. You can see how this could help you if you're picking up Fade. And the reason why is because one of your antennas might be working better than another one for receive. That's the whole purpose for using diversity reception. It allows you the opportunity to tune in on a signal and be able to hear it more clearly by using both BFOs. You'll hear one in one ear, one in the other, and not hit the pop filter. It's been one of those days. And then you'll be able to pick up the signal better, even if there's fade, because the two antennas you're selecting are both on the same frequency and they're both fighting to get that same channel. So the same, same signal, I mean. So you're gonna hear it in both ears. The clue for you is gonna be figuring it out to be able to hear, okay, what's the call sign? What's the signal report, right? To be able to get the bare necessities of getting that cue cell. Diversity reception can be used both on the FTDX 101, D and MP. It can also be used here on the 5000. It's also available on the Elecraft K3 and K3S, the new Elecraft K4D, as well as ICOM's 7610 and their 7651. Sorry, 7851 does the same thing. It's a great thing to try. Diversity reception will help you in bad conditions when there's a lot of fade, okay? I need to pull some antennas back out because I don't, the weather's been too iffy lately. So there you go. Thank you so much, everybody, for being here. Appreciate you, you know, coming by and saying hello. And it's always my honor and privilege to see you. Thank you, guys. I mean that very much. Thank you, Digital Ham. You're a good guy. Look at that. That's pretty cool. People in the UK are still here. I'm blown away because it's so late there. My goodness. Thank you. Mike Zero, Foxtrot X-Ray Bravo. Thanks a lot for coming. It's nice to see you. And Steve, my dear friend from Plymouth in the UK. It's my honor and privilege to say hello. All right, that's it. Short show on diversity reception on a transceiver. Just showing it on the Yesu FTDX 101. Until next time, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Sorry, it's a short show, but I didn't like this element. The other one, I'm like, doggone it. I'm going to put in right or not at all. Thanks for watching, everybody. God bless you. Have a wonderful evening. Bye-bye.